when British and Indian troops were sent into the steaming jungles of Burma during World War II, their enemies weren't only the Japanese forces. The terrain itself became a relentless opponent. Monsoon rains, leeches, malaria and mud made every patrol a fight for survival. In these brutal conditions, a weapon was only half as important as the small green box issued to every man entering the jungle. A compact survival box designed not for combat, but for enduring the wet, disease-ridden nightmare of tropical warfare. What it contained may look simple today, but each item had been tested by experience, the kind learned through pain, sickness and loss, and together they represented a survival philosophy still valuable to anyone preparing for harsh, humid environments. The Burma campaign between 1942 and 1945 was unlike any other theatre of war. Soldiers found themselves fighting in heat that melted rations, humidity that rotted their boots, and rain that fell for weeks without pause. Entire battalions became immobilized by disease and exhaustion rather than enemy fire. Even seasoned fighters quickly learned that equipment designed for Europe was almost useless here. Canvas tents turned into sodden traps, metal tools rusted overnight, and unprotected wounds grew fatal within days. This is where the concept of the survival box emerged. It was born from field improvisations by the Chindits, the special jungle units under Ord Wingate, who realized that survival depended on keeping dry, clean and nourished, even when everything around them seemed to rot. By 1943, this survival kit was standardized and issued to British, Indian and Gurkha troops entering Burma. It wasn't fancy, but it kept men alive in conditions where modern outdoor gear would struggle. Inside the compact box were items that reflected the grim logic of tropical warfare. There were lime tablets, not the citrus fruit, but calcium hypochlorite, used to sterilize water that would otherwise breed dysentery. These tablets turned foul swamp water into something drinkable, often saving entire platoons from dehydration. Alongside them were anti-malarial tablets, a constant companion in a region where a single mosquito bite could end a soldier's campaign. Then came a simple but powerful tool-tinned curry powder. To most civilians, that might sound like a cooking luxury, but in Burma it was a necessity. It flavoured monotonous rations, but more importantly, the turmeric and chilli within helped ward off intestinal infections and encouraged eating when soldiers lost their appetite in the heat. This spice wasn't for taste. It was survival through chemistry and culture, borrowed from the Indian troops who understood jungle diets far better than their British officers. There were also packets of salt to replace what was lost through constant sweating, a small block of soap to fight fungal infections that devoured skin, and mosquito netting impregnated with oil or grease to stop insects that carried malaria, dengue, and filariasis. One overlooked but vital inclusion was a small tin of condensed milk tablets. Dense, sweet, and long-lasting, they gave both energy and comfort when fresh food was impossible to find. The survival box also contained small tins of grease or wax, which soldiers used to waterproof boots, guns, and fabric. In a land where moisture destroyed everything, a few grams of grease could mean the difference between working equipment and useless scrap. Soldiers quickly learned to apply it religiously, rubbed into leather boots to keep them pliable, smeared over rifle parts to prevent rust, 
and layered on cloth to create crude but effective rain barriers for sleeping or covering rations. This concept of grease as armour is something even modern bushcrafters and preppers overlook. A homemade version of the World War II grease mix can still be made today. Animal fat melted with a small portion of beeswax and cooled into a dense paste. Applied to boots, tools, or even cloth tarps, it seals out moisture naturally without synthetic sprays. Those small field tins carried a tradition of practical chemistry, born in desperation and refined by need. If there was one item that defined jungle survival, it was the mosquito net. Troops quickly learned that no weapon, no uniform and no courage could protect against disease-carrying insects. The net wasn't just hung over sleeping bags, it was adapted creatively. Some cut it into strips and wrapped their ankles, others used it to line dugouts or tents to block leeches and flies. The grease applied to the mesh added another layer of defence, turning it into what soldiers jokingly called a grease curtain. Modern survivalists can still use this principle by combining breathable fabric with natural repellents. Coconut oil infused with citronella or camphor rubbed into the edges of a fine mesh can create a barrier that mimics this World War II innovation without relying on chemicals. It's simple, field repairable and sustainable, just as it was in the jungles of Burma eight decades ago. The real genius of the Burma survival box wasn't the individual items, but the mindset it represented. Each soldier was taught that survival came from preparation, discipline and respect for the environment. The box forced them to plan water purification before thirst, to treat clothing as protection instead of comfort, and to use every material, from grease to spice, for dual purposes. For anyone studying survival today, this philosophy remains timeless. The lesson is that gear alone doesn't save lives. Understanding the logic behind it does. Whether in a jungle, a flooded region, or a damp campsite, the principles of dryness, hygiene, and nutrition remain identical. Recreating a Burma-style kit for modern use could involve a metal tin packed with purification tablets, a strip of mesh fabric, a grease blend, salt, and a small packet of spices, compact, multi-purpose, and battle-proven by history. The Burma Survival Box represents the intersection of culture, necessity, and ingenuity. It's a reminder that survival isn't about the most expensive gear, but about resourcefulness born from constraint. In a world obsessed with high-tech solutions, the humble wartime field kit still holds lessons in adaptability and endurance. For serious students of history and survival, understanding what went into that little box is a way of preserving more than knowledge. It's preserving a mindset that turned ordinary soldiers into adaptable survivors. If this breakdown of forgotten field survival gear from the Burma campaign gave you a new perspective on historical resilience, make sure to subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video with other history enthusiasts who appreciate the art of survival forged in war. The past still has lessons for those preparing for the unknown.